Gint was a handsome young boy who came from a far-off country called Norway. Pierre had decided that when he grew up, he would marry a beautiful girl named Solvig. She had said to him, someday, Pierre, if you learn to work for what you want instead of just taking it, maybe we will marry and be happy. as a cabin boy on a great ship. He had sailed from Norway to a strange country called Arabia, where many of the people lived the year round in tents and traveled over the sandy deserts on the backs of camels. Deep in the desert country of Arabia lived many bands of fierce robbers. Arabia, Pierre met a beautiful but dangerous dancing girl named Anitra. She said to Pierre, why should a handsome and clever young man like you work? I have easier ways to get everything you want. I know how we can steal all the money and jewels from Al Hamad, the wealthy merchant, and we'll never be caught. Pierre listened to Anitra's plan. It sounded so easy. Late that night, when Al Hamad was away, Anitra showed Pierre how to break into the stronghold of the wealthy merchant. It was dark, and Pierre was very, very frightened. But he did just as she had told him, and soon found the money and the jewels exactly where Anitra said they would be hidden. Pierre heard someone coming. Quickly, he slipped out of a window and dropped softly to the street below. With enough money and jewels so they would never again have to work for anything they wanted, Pierre and Anitra jumped on a huge white horse and rode off into the desert. But neither Peer nor Anitra noticed the dark eyes that watched them as they rode away. Peer and Anitra rode the great white horse far into the desert. At last they stopped to rest and divide the treasure. Peer began to feel that maybe he should not have listened to Anitra, but when he saw all the money and jewels spread before him, he thought to himself, how will Solvig ever know? And greedily he began to take his half. Finally, the two equal shares were placed in separate saddlebags and hung over the great white horse. Anitra told Pierre to wait while she ran to the top of a small hill and made sure there was no one in sight. Pierre waited. He saw Anitra signal. Had she seen someone? Had they been followed? Anitra came running back. Pierre, she whispered, go to the crest of the hill and see for yourself. Pierre left the great white horse and ran to the top of the hill. He looked into the distance, but there was nothing. He turned, then he saw he had been tricked. Anitra had mounted the horse, and waving back at him, she had galloped away with all the money and the jewel. Alone in the great desert, Pierre trudged slowly through the hot sand. What a fool he had been. Evening came, Pierre was thirsty and hungry. The desert was burning in the daytime, but at night it was freezing. Far ahead, Pierre saw fires. As he came closer, he could see it was probably the camp of robbers. He crawled as close as he could. And there he saw Anitra standing before the robber chieftains. The tribesmen had captured her, taken all her money, and made her a slave.
not let the robbers find him, he sneaked back into the lonely desert. Through the long, cold night, he trudged over the deep sand. How right you were, Solvig, he said to himself. How right you were. If I ever get out of the desert, I'll never, ever take what is not mine. All next day, Pier struggled across the burning desert. And just when he thought he couldn't take another step, he saw the ocean ahead, and he knew he would be safe. He had learned his lesson. Thank you.